would say yes, they do. All lives do matter, but... All lives do matter, but... All lives matter, but... All lives do matter, but... I guess there's a part of me that I would say, oh yeah, 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 of course all lives matter, but... We know all lives matter, but we're focusing on the black ones right now. Controversy on campus of Black Lives Matter flag is flying high right next to the American flag. Students at the University of Vermont surprised to see the showing of support from the student government. The flag expects Black Lives Matter flag is flying over the University of Vermont. The Black Lives Matter flag goes missing from the University of Vermont. I was, I remember being so shocked and surprised. And at the same time, I remember on my Facebook page or whatever, um, I started posting um, uh, uh, pictures of it and saying, look what my institution has done. And I knew from the summer that he had a Black Lives Matter flag and that he planned to raise it should the occasion be required. Because it was last summer and I had our marketing person uh, design the flag and had it made. So I thought at some point in time, the flag would have to go up. I'm sort of the keeper of the flagpoles, so to actually put it up was not a big deal. I cranked the old flag down and put the new one up. Um, I put the flag up on my own um, uh, early in the morning on that Thursday, I believe. I needed to have somebody actually sponsor the flag because I'm the approver, so I really shouldn't be approving my own request. So I went over and had a conversation with Jason from Student Government Association. They sponsored the flag. It was under like this headline of like SGA put this up. It's not like they needed to really push through anything to get that up. It was just they just needed to make the suggestion. So while I appreciate that that it happened through SGA or whatever, um, I think the way that they wrote about it was giving them a little too much credit. I just remember walking either to or from the Davis Center, and I like just looked up and saw it. I don't think there was like any notice about it going up. Um, I just remember seeing it, and I. I felt good. I hadn't left my room all day, so I didn't see it until Akila pointed it out and until her, her post went viral. Another student leader posted about the Black Lives Matter flag and that's how I saw it. Um, so I hadn't even actually seen it. She posted it the morning it went up on Facebook and it like kind of got shared and went viral. So that's how I first found out about it. It really hit when I saw Akilah's Facebook post um, kind of being shared by everyone and then getting cycled through. To the extent that social media platforms support grassroots social movements, Twitter and other platforms I think are really useful in terms of raising awareness, organizing people, raising money, keeping issues in this case of racial justice in the spotlight. And it seems that that would be a call then for them to continue, for to, to, to continue to use social media platforms to do that. So the media for me is everything. Uh, I probably got, I was the default phone number for people who called the university um, switchboard. I probably got well over 100 phone calls. The social media component was just absolutely um, interesting. Uh, had my life threatened, my job threatened, uh, that threatened to take all the federal money that UVM gets from the federal government because Black Lives Matter is a political party and institutions can't support political parties. I mean, all of that stuff. So it's interesting that the that social media part sort of went in that way. I think it was powerful to see UVM's social media because I think the comments I had saw prior to were underneath like the Instagram page and the Facebook page. Um, but for UVM to boldly state that you know, 
this is something that we're proud of. There was a lot of negative pushback from, uh, you know, families and, and alum on homecoming weekend. So the president and others were really fielding a lot of complaint and a lot of anger. I was actually like scared, like, um, because I just didn't know what to expect out of the campus. So he texted me that morning to let me know that it had been stolen and that he was working really hard to try to find a replacement because he was furious and upset. I was pissed. I was like in tears when I got to um, the place because I just thought, how dare somebody do this right now? Why? Those same people who will go out of their way to spit at someone from their car, it's not a student, like, it's not a far-fetched idea to think that they would steal a flag. A lot of times UVM in Burlington and Vermont as a whole thinks like we're pretty liberal, things are good here, and it almost allows us to think that problems don't exist, that racism doesn't exist, that other forms of oppression don't exist. Um, and I think that just kind of shows like, yep, even at UVM, that flag is going to be taken down by someone who didn't like it, but we're going to put it right back up because that's our val those are our values. Um, communication was happening, transparency, you know, and to understand that having stolen rather than university or somebody, you know, actually took it down because that wasn't the case. And so I had to make sure the flagpole wasn't broken uh, because clearly the, the goal was to put another flag back up. So we did that. And during that time that morning, he let me know that he and his partner were making a Black Lives Matter flag, which moved me to tears. Basically decided they were gonna make another flag. Amy was gonna make another flag. And I was like, Sunday? Uh, what stores are open? How do you make a flag? Like I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't, I'm not very creative, so I couldn't figure that out. Pat Brown took it upon himself to remake a whole flag that it was of good quality and string it up. Um, for for his students, for uh, the students of color. I think for me it showed kind of dedication because I don't think a lot of other schools would have taken the time to create a flag. I think they made the right choice by putting it up, replacing it and putting up another one. Uh, specifically Pat Brown, I think that was a um, uh, very honorable thing he did. I was so proud of UVM for doing it. So proud of Pat Brown and all the other people who were involved in getting this flag. Yeah, I mean, like, it wasn't like a paper mache piece of crap. Like, this was like a fully stitched flag that went up the day after it was stolen. I felt like they made a conscious effort to tell me that I mattered and to tell many other students that as well. Um, like, there was no announcement like, oh, we're going to make sure this happens. We're going to put it back up. Um, he just did it. That's such an amazing example of uh, support and advocacy and allyship. Uh, when you when you you know spend your time your energy your products you know to fix something and to make something right. Then again, it was just another moment where like we were so disappointed that I got stolen. The person who did that, uh, whatever, regardless of whatever their intention was, the impact was that it only made us stronger and unified us. <laughs> For us, it was kind of just to show the school our appreciation to the flag and to show people why we appreciated the flag. And then it just became something more, like it just became kind of, it became a place where students came and showed their solidarity and showed like that they were here to support us. So let's sort of put a flag up and have a conversation about it and build some programs and some, some dialogue around it. which happened a little bit in the fall, this past fall, but probably didn't as much as it could have or should have. I felt that 
we made a great stride in putting that Black Lives Matter flag up, but what have you done since then? How do we, you know, continue to move from the words and the language and our common ground on all these things and act on that? And you see it happening in some spaces, and I just hope we'll continue to see more of that be the case for more of the UVM community. Uh, uh, a, so a more real embrace so that behavior changes and therefore policy changes and therefore, you know, we we are more daring, which is what Pat Brown was. We are more daring in our stance, you know, against oppression. Grassroots movements are great, but when we have institutions like the University of Vermont and then other universities taking a stance, I think is when the pressure will come to those in political power to make change. There is a lot that we need to work on as a university, but there is also at the same time a lot that we've done well. One of the important things to, to really do is to acknowledge that there are um, organizations on campus that dedicate their entire being on race um, and on just ethnicity and on cultural understanding. So I think the most important thing is to partner with these organizations and to add us to the discussion, you know, add us to the round table. Having centers like the Mosaic Student Center and different programs like that, although they increase visibility, they also are catering to like the needs of this community, you know. We were on Revstone campus in the Blundell House and you know, you talk about racism that's inherent in geography and the fact that we were on the periphery of campus where Blundell House was. Now we're in living learning and it's fabulous to be here because students live here first of all, you know, in living learning complex, which is awesome. So in addition to a large common area that's just like a great gathering, meeting space, we have a kitchen which was just got fully renovated. We have a student club space. We have a meditation room. We have um, a library. We have a large classroom space. It's just wonderful. Really, really happy, really thankful to be here and happy that the institution got behind us and, and really understood the importance of this. You know, this space is really dedicated to the mission of making sure that, you know, people of color know who they are, that their culture is celebrated, and you develop in your cultural knowledge about yourself as part of your educational journey here at UVM. What BSU does to increase visibility of students of color on campus is hold events that students of color care about. Um, for example, something we did recently was uh, the Black History Month fashion show. Um, something else we've done um, has been open mic nights, has been talent shows. We don't realize the power that we harness, the power that Martin, Malcolm, Rosa gave their best efforts to garnish. It's something simple, see? Is it the heart, the mind, the head? Um, music, right? Having, having events where music is a big part of it. Um, having marches, that's something that BSU has done as well, marching to downtown or standing in solidarity with various things, Black Lives Matter, Women's March. And I think this university basically just needs to continue acknowledging that Black Lives Matter and that they understand what it really means and making sure that, you know, they continue to keep an eye on how are Black Lives not mattering here and what do we need to do about that? So the way I view it is there should be more faculty of color. Um, we need to provide mandatory training for professors on this campus. Um, but I think staff and faculty having more conversations, knowing how to address when racism comes up in class. But college is a microcosm of life, and I think there's so much things to learn for any student within the years that they're attending college. And I think as much as a university can do to, to teach us those life skills or those these moments that really matter, aside from academics, they should do that as much as they can. We're a huge part of the community, the you know, national context, that university should be a place where this exact conversation be happening. I have helped many speakers come to this campus through student organizations on campus that I don't agree a lick with what they say. Um, but as a marketplace of ideas, we need to figure out a way to hear what other people have to say and not live in our own little ideological cocoons and engage in conversation. I think we run into problems when, um, and we're all guilty of this, but when we build our own bubbles uh, that surround our, our own perspective with the same news and information and points of view that do nothing other than 
reaffirm our own perspective. And at that point, you're not learning. You're just wallowing in propaganda, one-sided, you know, viewpoints that reinforce what you already think you believe. In a true learning situation, we have to push ourselves beyond those comfortable places. And this is not, Black Lives Matter is not a threat. It is a cry for help. Right now, black people need the resources. Um, and, and what those resources are, are, are many things. Um, it's love, it's compassion, it's sympathy, it's empathy, it's equity. What can I do to impact tomorrow, or next year, or 10 years from now? Challenge white people if we want to look at it from a, from a race perspective. Challenge men if you happen to be a woman. Uh, I think the issues are, are uh, everywhere and they're 24 7. And unless people do work, um, they're not going to change. So, social media, Revolution 2.0, as Egyptian activist Wild Gonim defined it, will get us so far. But at the end of the day, we have to have the courage to put down the phones and the laptops and look each other square in the face and really figure out together how we can build a better, more humane, more sustainable, more just community. And it has to start where we are, which is here at University of Vermont. So. We really have got to realize in community, you have to step up and stand for each other. And um, we're, 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 we're in a better place. Still got to work, but a better place. See 